Hi everyone, welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor. This is the eighth video in a series of eight, and we're doing a, a night scene as our final project, a night in Paris, specifically a night along Boussy Street, which is in the Saint Germain area, and a lot of cafes, a lot of nightlife on this particular evening. I believe we'd had, you know, uh, a meal, something to drink, and we went out to to enjoy a, a walk on Boosie Street, maybe by take it down towards the Seine River. Anyway, you can see rain has fallen, and it's it's uh, giving a shimmer, a shine to the street. The lights are very active. The front of uh, this large building is very bright. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, sort of the goal is to present uh, the contrast that we see in a night scene, to do it with some flair, uh, with brush strokes. You can see, even in the early stages, I'm being rather loose and free with the brush. brush. I'm trying to get a few dry brush strokes down early on to get a sparkle of light happening where I have overhead lights, or I have lights from an interior shining out, or I have a little reflection on the street. And once I get some of those in place, I'll build up um, a more substantial wash of warm colors through the buildings. This, this is an underpainting, which will dry, but I want to establish a, a feeling of warmth to the buildings, which is created by the lights that are going on in the cafes, the lights that are overhead, the lights that are might be cars coming down a street. The warm light is is one of the main goals, and it's we we will be adding cool colors uh, to complement the light. Remember, we talked about that earlier, using complementary hues to make uh, these primary hues stronger. So, using a lot of orange and red now will will be followed by another layer of blues and cooler colors. But this is this is what I do for an underpainting, uh, looking for some interesting whites and certainly some of that warm color that's coming out of our cafe. So the painting now, it's dried and I can go back in with harder edges. <clears throat> and as I'm placing um, the buildings on the left, you can tell already I'm using a strong uh, French ultramarine blue up there. And I want to create uh, certainly a, a, um, a contrast in the hues and make this red, orange, yellowish color feel more powerful. I'm also working on a graded wash. Can you notice that? I'm very strong up at the top of the buildings. As this wash comes down towards the awnings, I've added a bit of water and getting a nice glow uh, bounce back up on the buildings. While I'm up on the tops of the buildings, I put on a few little points, strokes. To me, they represent the chimney pots. The It's a very identifiable, identifiable characteristic of Paris is the skyline, especially in old Paris. And I want something of that. I try most of the scenes that were involving architecture this past eight weeks, I was trying to do that. Uh, if you look back, you'll see that I I used that feature quite a bit because to me it evokes uh, the feeling of Paris. So into that uh, graded wash, I added a warm hue to create the awnings and worked around some of the brighter hues uh, coming out from the distant cafes. And now I've moved over to the building which is closer. And I'm dropping washes, for the most part, uh, wet on wet. Uh, I am careful to preserve some of those whites that I set up originally. And while I'm doing that, I'm, I'm also setting up the feeling of light bouncing up into the building. This is a, a common characteristic of night scenes. We're used to seeing daylight scenes when light is falling basically from the top of the building down. But in night scenes, the building is actually coming from the bottom and bouncing up into the building. So this direction, you can already see it in the uh, building on the left, this directional light has a strong effect on the overall uh, 
feeling of the scene. So I continue with the ultramarine blue uh, and a bit of, while it's wet, dropping in a bit of that vermilion color to get uh, a nice wet-on-wet -wet wash that's transitioning. It's going to dry relatively light and give me some of the uh, warm light bounce effects that we feel on the front of the building. Continue down below with the, with the brushworks with, that uh, establishes the windows to the right. And I keep playing with this wash, which is a good working strategy. If your wash is glistening like this wash, you can continue to add color, blend in other colors, do a lot of different things until the wash starts to lose its glisten. And then you need to step back and uh, wait for it to dry fully before you approach it again. Um, this is uh, when we're working wet on wet, we really have to be aware of the condition of the paper. So it's a, it's a challenge because we're working quickly. We're trying to do something within a certain time frame. And at the same time, we have to pay attention to the color in our brush, the thickness of the paint. And now, how dry is that paper? It's another thing that we have to tend to as we're building up the watercolor. This happens over time. It's, it's not an instant thing, but your sense of timing will sharpen and become more accurate uh, with each painting that you do. You can build up this sense of timing, but it's very slow to happen. So uh, don't lose heart. Don't lose... Never, uh, never feel that you're incapable of doing it because it, it, it's a skill like anything else. We have to invest ourselves and train to get it and soon after you know doing a few thousand paintings you don't have to think about it as much it becomes second nature this is much like the musician once they learn to um, move their hands along the instrument they don't have to look at their hands anymore or once they know how to read a score they can focus more of attention on what's happening with dynamics and so on so all these skills come out of immersion, come out of repetition, and eventually you don't have to think about it as much. In the beginning, it's like, I guess I would liken it to driving a car. If you remember your first experience driving a car, there were so many things to think about. It was almost paralyzing because you had to think about the brake, the clutch, the what's going on with traffic, et cetera, et cetera. But now you drive a car and you think about 100 or more things at once. Scary thought, but let's move on to the painting. Uh, now we place the sky, and look how that's affected our lights. The lights are really popping off of the page now. That blue in the sky is amplifying the orange, making the glow uh, very strong. The painting has dried off a bit, so I can go back in with some dry brush, and that's what I'm doing. I'm adding dry brush strokes up above uh, in the upper section to create a little bit of a railing. I'm going back into this dry section to create the foundation for the sign. I'll uh, be adding some dry brush here and there to <clears throat> for windows, for the feeling of the masonry that's in front. Uh, and I just kill, I, I recognize something in the image and I either add it or I decide, no, the painting doesn't need it. I'll I'll do without. And sometimes I arrive at the conclusion of the painting and realize I didn't really need all that stuff, but if it's not interfering with my idea, I'll leave it. If it's an interference, there's always a chance to kind of rub it out or, or make it blurry. I do that a lot at the end, too. So I'm keepy, keep adding color, or in this case, water, to affect um, the washes that I'm adding. Trying for some soft edges, trying for a feeling of a graded wash in the upper section and lower section. You can see the, the effect that this has uh, on the overall painting. The effect that uh, creating that graded wash on the left has. It feels like light is bouncing back up into the buildings. The same on the right-handed building where we feel light is kind of emanating from below and uh, shadows, only shadows and silhouettes above. 
time to add a few figures. The figures are important to the painting. I don't really consider them the major focal point. Rather, they give the building scale and they give a sort of busyness to the scene. I'm putting a few figures across the crosswalk, a few figures standing in front of the cafe, uh, some coming in on the left-handed crosswalk, and a hint of the figures in the cafe, very, very loosely stated. But I want them to integrate with the scene. In fact, they're all going to have a touch of this red hue because that red hue is really bouncing around in the lower section of the painting and not only glistening off of the pavement, but bouncing back up into the figures. So uh, this was not in our photograph, our original image, but, you know, a city scene, especially this area, without figures would feel abnormal. And um, so I'm, I'm adding, not crowds, but I'm adding figures at different places in the painting to give it a busy feel to it. Now it's, uh, I'm adjusting. Uh, this seems to happen in almost every painting where the painting dries off and you realize mm, it dried paler than I want. And you can see that if we add some uh, tone, some color up above, we're going to get a better result below. So that's what I'm doing now is I'm strengthening the graded wash above. I'm adding a bit of color to those whites that are in the distance and the whites that are above the cafe and the window. This is to make the luminosity through uh, the, the reddish cafe even more vibrant. We need to add a few windows, a feeling of how the architecture moves uh, left to right. So a few dry brush strokes because our paintings dried off. We can add those with confidence and they give, um, give us a feel of the architecture of Paris. Keep building in the details, adding more details, and um, those sorts of details could be continually added, almost through the, the course of the painting. At some point I feel like enough is enough, so I'm going to move on and try to finish the painting uh, with as few of those extra touches as possible. Painting the uh, signage now, I'm using a pigment here called Jean Brilliant, which is made by Holbein. It's an opaque color, and since uh, we have a lot of bright yellows and warm hues in our painting, it works well to create the signage in a dry brush fashion. So I'm using a small brush with the opaque paint but I'm really using it in a very dry fashion. Uh, this is intentional to give me a feeling of a shimmering or animation to the sign. I want it to be readable, but I don't want it to be um, overpowering. I don't want it to just be um, something that's static. I want it to fit into this animated style that I'm using. So I'm using dry brush for that, and it works perfectly because it's matching, matching the yellow-orangey underpainting that was used. So th this is intentional. I knew that um, I would need some of this at some point in the painting to liven up the sign. So um, the yellow tones that were used underneath, they all work together and now the opaque color that's placed on top can can feel like a part of the painting and not like it's just floating there. What we're doing now is with the same dry brush adding some red highlights right out of the tube. Uh, this does a feedback to the to the red that's in the awning and the red that's reflected in the street. Um, with evening scenes the, these sorts of reflected colors become really important because they do a feedback to that uh, source of light. They give a continuity to the light. Uh, they they also add a festive quality. This this bright red that we're using is just right to create the mood that we felt on Boosie Street with the, the loud activity. There was a 
jazz band playing on the street, and I think they're there throughout the summer. If you go, you'll hear New Orleans-style jazz on the corners of Boosie Street. Some highlights to bring this figure in particular forward. Uh, I want to show that, you know, he's closer to us and is disappearing a little bit into the dark uh, right-hand side of the painting. That's okay for me. Um, to me, it's more about what's happening in the cafe and the sign and the lighting above. And uh, very quickly, this painting is starting to get a finished feel. Um, in the photograph, we see numbers of lights in the background and, and uh, details through the architecture, but I'm keeping a lot of that out of this painting trying for simplicity, trying for a feeling of light. I'm going to put even a little sh shine on his shoes. Why not? That gives you know a more complete feeling to the figure and is still done in an abstract way. Uh, at this point, I'm experimenting a little, seeing what the lights look like um, reflected into the foreground. Kind of nice. I think I'll keep it, but I'm going to blend it a little bit. Not much more. I want to bring this figure forward, and to do that, I'm slightly uh, putting a little tone on the figures behind so that they retreat a little bit. Um, and then this figure that I painted in such a strong dark with a red tie and a red face coming towards us is going to come a little closer, be a little more obvious. Uh, we're doing some dry brush now into the to create the distant windows and get a feeling of the angles and the perspective. Uh, yeah, we're kind of fiddling now. I think I should probably stop. And uh, here's the finished piece. Look at those colors, how they work together. The orange amplified by all those blues and rich tones. The red is pervading everything. Highlights, a feeling of light coming from the street and going up into our scene as well as a nice combination of edges. Don't you think the, the soft edges above from those graded washes um, juxtapose against hard edges and broken edges from dry brush give the watercolor a depth and a feeling of animation? Um, the figures are plentiful, but they're not, uh, not too distracting. They're placed in accordance with keeping our center of interest visible and up a little higher in the painting, but they do they do their job in giving us a feeling of scale. Um, the center of interest is clear. The composition, if I have to say what composition stem this flows from, would be something like a cross, but we have a vertical of light with a horizontal uh, and an intersection point with a horizontal of light. And the value pattern is a small light within a big, dark, mid-value. And uh, so that is the end of this session, and I hope it was helpful for all of you. I know that the, the exercises were fun because I got to revisit some of the paintings, some of the ideas that I had for Paris, and at the same time talk about watercolor technique and design.